team that has almost double the hard point wins. Folks, welcome back to the CCL Alpha stream. Hopping on board is myself, Seymour, alongside Proper. We're here to bring you Rutgers University Scarlet Knights versus the Davenport Panthers, a number 13 team versus a number 20 team. I'm super excited. Proper, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, we had ourselves a quite of an eye opener, I suppose, as far as the first match is concerned. You know, High Point University constantly always trying to make an argument if they are a top 25 team or not. That Chattanooga roster, I tell you what, man, you give them an inch, they absolutely fly a mile. This one is going to be just as telling. To see how everything is going to be shaken up. You know, I, I'm surprised to see that too. You know, I feel like that's a story for a lot of teams inside of stage two. We're seeing, you know, the the kind of the better of some teams and the worst of teams who we thought would do great. So it's interesting to see how a lot of these teams will fare out. But I mean, while we're bringing out this match right now, we're looking at the Northeast Tier 1 division where, you know, it's a, a lot of the story that this division distinctly very kind of separate in skill or in skill. You got uh, Northwood and Bay State sitting at the top and, you know, it's up in arms or who's going to be kind of trailing behind them. It's going to constantly just be like that, too, because, I mean, like, the Northeast Division, you know, we, we don't have, you know, your, your Ottawa's. Yeah, you just listed two of the top three teams, I suppose, but, I mean, until, again, we end up seeing all these teams culminate and face off against each other for some, I guess, uh, some inter-regional uh, battles, it's going to constantly feel like this. So they, this is a constant opportunity for the Northeast Region make a name for yourself to really just kind of stick your neck out there and really just show the world what you have because when it ends up coming down to those towards those playoffs if you're not a top eight team you have to go through the absolute gauntlet on the half that is going to be that lcq this is a gauntlet inside there well let's take a look at two teams who are looking to go toe to toe with the best in the ccl we got the rockers scarlet knights sitting at number 13 in the power rankings and the davenport panthers sitting at number 20 coming into this division you know, 12 and 0 record for Rutgers, undefeated in match or series records, and Davenport 11 and 2, two losses under the belt. You know, looking to shake that off now. Yeah, they definitely love to just to continue on uh, on forward off of the high point that is their victory just last week uh, over Rowan Esports, and it wasn't close at all. You know, the hundred point club and the hard point won the search and destroy by three rounds, and they won the control in a 3-0 fashion. Definitely a different look for the Davenport Panthers as a whole than what they looked like a few weeks ago. This team is really starting to be coming into their own. It's definitely lovely to see. But this, these Rutgers guys, I tell you, man, the Scarlet Knights have always found a way to impress me ever since I first came on uh, to the CCL many moons ago. It's just one of those things that they've always found a way inside of Rutgers University to be able to field such a fantastic team. ZB3 has been a great leader this year, has a great group of guys around him. Definitely looking forward to the, towards this matchup. I was talking to him a little bit earlier today uh, on, on Twitter, and it's one thing to be said about Rutgers, uh, you know, trying to, again, make a name for themselves in a region here in Tier 1 with Bay State and Northwood. I definitely think that they got the chops to do it, especially when it comes down to their hard point. I was going to have to bring out their all in doing so. Let's introduce them. You know, your home team for the day, your Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I mean, you named them yourself ZB3, heading the team. You got Ryuga, Perseus, and Hybrid proper. Talk to me a little bit about this squad. I mean, I know you got to talk to them a little bit, so what are you looking at in this squad? I'm just continuously looking at their cohesion, their teamwork. This is a roster coming out of Rutgers University that just always puts in the work, always puts in the effort on top of focusing on their school degree, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be competing for their college. But even still, at the same time, they have a lot of bright spots to boot. All Any one of these four players has what it takes in those search and destroy rounds to clutch up, go big in control, find those two kills that are a necessity, give themselves the edge in a, in a more objective-based game mode. But in the hard point, again, as we were saying, they are undefeated 18-0 and zero as a whole. Their chemistry comes through in spades when we're talking about the rotation in their holds. Well, when chemistry is the name of the game, I'm really excited to kind of introduce the away team for sure because the Davenport Panthers sitting across the table, they're nothing to scoff at either. I mean, a team who's been playing together for a very long time, a core squad of four who are looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best in the CCL. You got Gecko, North, Anthrax, and Sheldon. Proper, talk to me a little bit about this away team. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we were talking about in the digital green room, it's interesting for Thrax, uh, again, through... All in all, from what they've been able to uh, try to manifest as far as challengers runs are concerned, didn't exactly get themselves in the placing that they were wanting to, but Sheldon North Gecko have been a tried and true trio behind Thrax for a long time. 
And in the beginning of the season, they were getting away with highway robbery. You know, you could have Thrax, North, Sheldon, any one of these guys just on one specific map. They can go on an absolute tear. And the other ones can just kind of kick their feet up. But it, it, when they started facing top teams, when they started to face other teams in the top 25 power rankings that come out weekly, you start to see a lot more plot holes that if one player ends up going down or even on the opposite side, if one player finds an abundance of kills, the rest of the team is starting to lag behind. But in recency, specifically in that matchup versus Brock and Rowan, albeit losing that Kavutsu Hardpoint versus Brock, it was a strong showing that the team is ready to slow up when it is necessary to understand that each kill on the map actually means something. And hell, if Thrax ends up dropping a 50 bomb on, say, like a Bokaj Hardpoint, for example, you better hope that the rest of the team is ready to rotate and take those superior positions to make sure that those holds can be held. Well, I guess that brings us to setting the table for the series proper because we are going to a Bokash hardpoint for that map number one. Following that, we're going to get a Berlin search and destroy. Gavitu control for confirmed third map, possibly a swing map. And if this goes on the distance, you're going to see a double dose of Tuscan to close this out. How are you feeling about this? Because it's a very interesting map set, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the Gavutsu control is going to forever just be a toss-up until it ends up coming down to uh, ticks uh, to settle out the uh, the fifth and final round. But, you know, the, the glorified TDM can definitely offer a certain instance that a lot of teams can put on some highlight reels, right? I mean, the spawn traps can absolutely come through both on offense and defense alike. And that, again, is what you're mostly looking to when it comes down to the Davenport Panthers. Uh, and as I was saying, for that Bokosh hardpoint, it will be quite telling, again, that if the Davenport Panthers can keep up with the pace of the chemistry of the Scarlet Knights, then we're going to be in store for a very fun series. But if Rutgers are able to then bear witness to a lot of these one-dimensional hits that have been exploited historically this season against the Davenport Panthers, then we could be in and out of this series very, very quickly here, my guy, because hey, this is a team you do not just run at, that you cannot just expect your gutty to do all the work for you. This is an inter-top 20 battle at the end of the day for top 20 power rankings. You have to consider the odds one thing within its own self is that the Rutgers Scarlet Knight, they are 100% going to base themselves off that team chemistry, playing as a four-player unit. And we need to be able to see that from the Davenport Panthers. All four players need to click together across these two very first two maps on the Bokosh Hardpoint, on the Berlin Search and Destroy, if they want to keep it competitive versus Rutgers Esports. And hell, it doesn't even need to be that first map. They could lose this, in my opinion. Exactly. I think it's much more of a 2-3-5 and five that Davenport Panthers should be looking at. Their Search and Destroy has definitely been a whole lot better, in my opinion, throughout the entirety of CCL 2022. Might be able to catch these Rutgers Scarlet Knights off guard. Well, it's a good thing that we're going to Bokash for that map. Number one, it's a little bit of a rage in the cage for the icebreaker between these two teams. It's definitely something where you can lean on more of that gun skill, something you can really get away with with those small little mistakes being it is i guess 50 percent smaller than a lot of maps that has been recorded in call of duty but let's kick it into gear proper let's see what these two teams have to match up against each other you got the panthers spawning off on the more preferred side to start this one off and let's see if they can hold on to this for the beginning break off already finding two but here come the Rutgers following players three go down it's a full four off that panthers taking limited kills or limited deaths and a, a strong start so far for davenport yeah, what do we mean by the favorite side there? Of course, you will immediately have that rotation locked down going over towards B2, but you're also offered a lot of superior positioning. The only position that you can't get in off the rip, lickety split, would be that top gate position, but the rollout was fantastic, as you pointed out. For Davenport Panthers, you got Gecko already on a five. Central for them to get that strafing run. They absolutely will find it for themselves, and that might come into play when they're looking to hold down P2, but got to be careful. Deal with these players getting inside a barn, of which Gecko will do in kind now on seven in a row. As a back pocket full of streaks while Rutgers Esports are scrambling across the map. Well, Gecko player I was looking forward to seeing lead this team in slang. 8-0, it is a fantastic start. But we're looking over to the tank hill now. As you can see, that Davenport set up early. And it's Rutgers looking for the break. Gecko hasn't yet died, so still working on this streak. Nine in a row, finally going to drop. But now you can see Davenport accumulating a whole 30 points to the 12 of Rutgers off this break. Here comes the break, in fact, from Rockers. They're going to slide in for the contention, and just like that, it's a sea of red to get back into the hill. Yeah, and immediately, I mean, when it comes down to the Bok Bokash hardpoint as a whole, you know, you don't always need to be <clears throat> holding on towards those favorite spawns. You could break quite early, and that's exactly what is starting to come through for Rockers Esports. See what you will. Maybe they took a little bit of time to warm up off of P1. They're doing a great job of just scrambling back through the tail end of one. 15 seconds still left to play over here, over by the tank hardpoint, and well, it's actually going to be Rutgers that are going to be conceding the space for now. Play for a couple exits, knowing they have the hedge spawns ahead of three. 
You know, proper, it, it's something that I was saying, is that you could get away with the little mistakes, and you know, only a 20-point lead, it's something that Rutgers definitely can come back to, especially when you're getting the early setup inside Grandma. So let's see if they can push this now and convert this into some good time. The contention's going to be inbound. You can see DBG Ghost looking for, or looking to just stay alive. Well, I guess the team is going to slay out around him. It's a full four down. That's definitely okay. Hasn't yet needed to take a gunfight. So in terms for Panthers, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board for a second break, but struggling to get anything going, struggling to even get a foot in the hill. Rockers, they have tied us up in the meantime. Thraxo is still trying to make an argument for trying to break inside this hard point. Hybrid is going to get mentally broken. Their ankles soon to follow. Four quickly dead. Or Rutgers Esports still close spawns. Keep in mind, you behind those hedges, you're not going to block out those spawns unless you get back towards that god heady of a tank itself. But Davenport can't do no wrong right now. 11 and 5 for Gecko off of their hot start. Still has a back pocket full of shrieks. Rutgers Esports have no choice. They have to hit through three if they want to get towards four, which is a hop, skip, jump away. And here they come for that rotation. Gecko making sure that it's hard to get off that platform. Over the shoulder, spots out hybrid. Not able to walk away with the kill, but Anthrax here to clean things up. A flip. Rockers get blessed in the back barn. They're going to be able to reinforce this hill right away in for the contention. Trying to find the kills, though, and they're just not presenting itself. So Panthers still finding some early contention off of this early rotation over to barn. And if you're Rockers, you just cannot be letting that happen, especially when you have the better side. Finally going to be in for time. Let's see if they can hold. Shaolin's going to find the kill in the ZB3 in again for this contention. And the kills come through in favor of the Panthers. They're going to be back in collecting the time. Oh, can you hold it? It's so good time to be fighting over here. I mean, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, where you would be rotating on, say, a Berlin or a Gavutu especially. That's when you're going to be rotating. But here on Bokaj, you're going to be seemingly trying to hit C teams, hit things out all the way until about that 10-second margin. And that's when Rutgers Esports, they will strike, get back in for the back 10. And, and marginally so, they, that's why it's been so competitive. Just 10 points between these two teams as we go down towards the Riverwalk. This is where we're going to have to see teams try to break in for these spawns. You want to get on the backside of the Willow Tree. Ghost is going to get shut down by North, who's over on that top hill. And they'll immediately get bantered back by Ryuga. But the problem is, is that you still have Davenport Panthers with those close spawns. And I love this call coming out from Gecko. Utilize these streaks. Get these players for Davenport Panthers off of this hard point. Try to take the space soon after. Drops the hammer, funnels Rutgers into the house. As soon as they push on out, you can see already set up the Panthers just picking them off one by one. Still alive up top inside of that bell tower. It's going to be ZB3, but while this is happening, Panthers on pace to break 100 points. In for the break is going to be Rutgers last a little bit. Hybrid is going to shut things down before they break 100. So really good showing at the end of this. There's a reason we say it's rage in the cage because it's nothing one-sided. Usually this gets personal across Bokaj. Oh, it absolutely will. You're going to continuously see this bloodbath building up for itself until the old grandma is satisfied herself. And even going in towards the second set of hard points, say, having this small lead is still going to be good for Davenport Panthers. It's just about maintaining 10, 15 seconds within a lead. That's how you know that teams are very close, but that's as comparative to, say, a, a traditional like 40 seconds or so. There's not many hard points on Bokosh, as you saw through that first set is at least opening for a lot of time. P2 would probably be the only one, but going in towards the second set, Rutgers Esports have absolutely warmed up now. ZB3 at 18 and 14. Gecko did end up investing at least the Glide Bomb in the previous hard point. Now we're getting things mixed. You can see where the spawns are coming through from Rutgers. It's actually on the southwest side of the map, but you have to be able to win the gunfights convincingly, so that way you can keep Davenport off of the hard point. They're able to do at least the latter for the time being. Now we got to take on the rotation as Davenport Panthers are trying to stream their way across the tank formation. It's a good old-fashioned pinstripe kill feed for Rockers now to take their lead, get the better rotation over to P2, and let's see if they can start pushing this into their advantage. You can see set up inside their power positions. Ryan Gould on screen. Top Barnes going to cut off north from the rotation. Looking to get pressure out there, though. Still praying away at the players. Looking to put pressure onto this hill. You can see in the kill feed, Panthers looking to heat up. Gecko finds hybrid on the inside, and that's just the break you're looking for. You're trying to get back into this if you're Rutgers, but that's a very strong moment out of the Panthers at proper. They are going to keep Rutgers out of this hill and only be down by about 20 for the time being. Yeah, off of P1, no less, where Rutgers were actually able to build up a sufficient lead, but even off of that as well, where Davenport Panthers were getting themselves an abundance of time off P2, nobody was constantly getting themselves barn control. 
not just inside the bottom of the barn, but top barn control. That is such a big power position. You have it in abundance of windows and abundance of line of sights that you can be watching all these players for Rutgers that were working their way back inside the hard point. And because of that, they get broken. Now the Panthers have to concede that space, put themselves on the backs of the hedges, hold on to these close spots and try to set up new. We saw this kind of flipped for the Rutgers. Locking down time and Grandma's early. Akeko is going to find the first. 3v3 even. Ryuga gives numbers now to Rutgers. You can see Hybrid flying on in for the contention. North ready for it. It's going to cut him down. Keeping time in for the Panthers for the time being. They're down by 22. They're still collecting here. Comes Ryuga from behind. The breaks coming up from the teammates. A full three down. Make it four. Still on the inside. It's going to be Anthrax. But you see they flipped them out. Rutgers now in the better spawns. For Grandma's Hill. We have to be careful not to get pinched here. Here comes Panthers trying to get on in. Still holding strong. The Rutgers, they hold the line. A break coming through from Rutgers in the first place. Remember when we were talking about that 10-15 second lead that Davenport Panthers were holding in towards the second set of hard points? Well, now the Rutgers eSport has got about 40 seconds in the lead. And that is still growing, by the way. The Panthers have been struggling to break a lot of these setups that Rutgers have been looking for time and time again. And because Davenport have been really just trying to fundamentally barrel stuff their way inside a lot of these hard points. Rutgers are absolutely thriving. 25 and 19 now for ZB3. Here comes the attempt to try to break through the middle of the map. ZB3 knows that there's one inside the shed, but Gecko absolutely smokes him. Ghost is now still committing towards the flank, and that'll be a little bit of a squad spawn coming through from at least a teammate. Can't really do much of anything off of it at all as Davenport Panthers are getting themselves some crucial time here on the hill. Well, time to breathe for the Panthers. The pressure comes through. Still not really pressed down. At all, 146 and counting Sheldon. Nice shots into Ryuka. Still in is DVG Ghost for the contention. Presence from both teams here. But it's going to be a little bit of a tug of war to see who walks away with this hill. Around the outside, the pinch is going to be through. Gecko reads it perfectly, but here comes the help, Gecko. All right, three kills from himself. Sheldon's going to chime in for four. And what a moment out of the Panthers to keep this competitive. Yeah, what a time to really come alive there in the second set of hard points. I mean, they spent a lot of this second set just getting absolutely put in the blunder having Davenport Panthers, but now they're starting to really come back alive. At the beginning of this set, remember, it was about a solid 116 to maybe about 80 or so, and Rutgers Esports have completely flipped that script, though Davenport Panthers off of four have been able to find themselves some of that crucial time that I was talking about. It's so juicy, isn't it? Because now, losing that previous gunfight, they're actually going to be forced to spawn on the backside of Hedges. So they'll initially be set up here for five. And this was a really good hard point for the Davenport Panthers. Now, they won't have the glide bomb to keep Rutgers at bay this time around, Colin, but they're winning all the gunfights, even finding all these trades. Rutgers are not going to be in a position to try to break inside of these spawns. The setup is starting to look pretty darn skippy. The moment that Davenport Panthers are feeling any sort of threat, and you have North over by the Willow Tree to die, try to deal with it all. Now two quick kills come on the backside of the tower, and over by the Willow Tree as well. Rutgers Esports, they have broken in ever so slightly. ZB3 rooting himself on in. Shots onto Sheldon. Very cheeky. Gonna take the MP40 for that. It's gonna allow Panthers back into this hill. About a marginal lead between both teams, 192 to 176, heading into third set of rotations proper. And now, being as this is 195 to 176, usually the score or the, the time clock would be a big thing to look at right now. But you still got a minute 16 on this hill. There's still plenty of time for these teams to close it out with score. There is. And if you're now Davenport, you just simply cannot allow Rutgers to get set up too cleanly. You, you just have to be able to find some of these kills convincingly so that way you can keep them off of the hard point because going in towards the second set, Rutgers were actually able to build, uh, what was it, about like 35 seconds off of P1? That never happens. I've never seen that happen unless the team is absolutely wiping the floor with the other one. But with oh, yeah. two teams being as close as this, Davenport Panthers simply cannot allow that to happen. And they're starting to do it in kind. But now we essentially have reset the map. Rutgers Esports over by the P2 side. They have to be able to maintain bar and positioning while also wiping Davenport Panthers off the map if they want to be able to get at least some of the back part of this scrap time while maintaining the close response for P2. Ryuga is just getting all these free kills, basically. Nobody's checking him whatsoever on four in a row. Looking for the fifth. A little bit of a dance outside Grandma's. And in the meantime, Rutgers, they have pushed the 200-point marker up to 212. They've already set up for next, but here comes the break. It's a nice, clean three of the inside. But again, Ryuga from behind, six in a row. That's the strafing run locked in now for Rutgers. And give him the glide bomb as well, completely breaking open this map proper. And now 216 and counting. Rutgers, they're looking to put this in striking distance of a map one victory. Uh, Sheldon needed to play their life a little bit longer, and by a little bit, I mean it's on Bokaj, and maybe you had to stay alive for another second, so that way the rotation could have come through. Now 227 to 188, so close it out here if you're Rutgers, but you're actually finding a lot of good trades. ZB3 with the Volk, of all things, Iron Sights. 
completely clips out the spawns as a whole. It's got a glide bomb being called in by Ryugi. You know they want to try to close it out here. Drops the hammer, finds Gecko. Still in the hills, Davenport, 28 seconds to look out for. You have to be careful not to be contested inside of this hill. Only down by 27 points. This is doable for Davenport. I mean, it's never over on Bokosh until the grandma sings. And right now, she is pretty silent. Up top, Anthrax looking for the break. It's a nice two at Rutgers to keep control of this rotation. Nobody inside the hill, so the time clock is getting burned. But they're going to stop it. As it is, a small little lead. Ryuga cutting off the rotation. Sheldon in behind. Gets spotted out on the hunt. Is going to be this last player. Information is going to be out. It's a nice two down. Flooding on in from the front. One by one. Here comes Davenport. Can they find the break? Anthrax is in. It's a nice three. They're going to hold on for now, but barely. And they know where the spots are coming from. They're still coming back from the hedges. So it's just one good break all Rutgers really need. Hopefully they can try to close it out. Even contesting the time will do it. And now the gill feed is starting to come back through. Even the pinstripes are going to be good for Davenport. They hold on. They just need 25. 19 seconds on the game clock. No time to breathe. No time to wipe off the sweat. It's a good old barnyard fight inside of this. Gecko's going to slide on out. He has to get back in for the time. 232 to 242. Trying to break off these last players. DVG goes. Finds it. Sheldon breaks on in. We're heading to the barn soon. But he's still got a few players to clean up here. In for the last little bit of time. Gecko trying to find hybrid. There's going to be the kill now. All eyes are going to be a barn. Rocker is going to be set up first. They only need five points. But most importantly, there's only eight seconds to go. They're going to be hopping on this. Looking to put this way in the way. Can anybody touch? It's a big no. And Rutgers East. Sports, they're going to be finding Bokosh map one. I thought I was going to go down to the game clock like three times, brother. I'm not going to lie. That was... Uh, it could have. Woo! I mean, it damn well should have, to be honest with you. I don't know why Rutgers were so gung-ho on making sure that they were set up for three. If you have 20 seconds remaining in the hard point, you force the issue of Davenport to have to get back in, but they do it the hard way. You saw a quick little glimpse of the stats. We'll make sure to go back and talk about those ones. Because oh, yeah. They were quite telling, especially for what Rutgers were able to do. Keep in mind, you, it was about a 20-point advantage for Davenport continuously through the first set of hills, if not going in towards the second set as well. And it really came down to what Rutgers were able to finally find within their own self, being able to find these very split-second calls on making sure that they were working pinches on crucial hills, like one, no less, to make sure that they maintained those close spawns for P2, and then when they ended up getting spawned out, they still maintain a superior position to be able to break back in and keep all of the Davenport Panthers at bay to make sure that they were still holding on to the rotation towards three. You go back to that second set, I promise you that there were a, a lot of opportunities for Davenport to be able to absolutely run away with it. Their setups just saw one little plot hole and Rutgers sniffed it out and they broke what felt like three hard points in a row. 43 and 37 for Sheldon. 47 and 38 for Gecko for the L, keep in mind you. Oh, yeah. This really shows the testament for how strong Rutgers Esports are as a whole team. I mean, you know what you're going to get when you go to Bokosh, and these numbers are definitely that. Feeling a little bit like Minnesota Rocker right now is, is Davenport sitting with these, uh, you know, kill numbers going up. 240 bombs for the L does not feel good, but you know the slang is there. You know that, you know, getting a little bit of personal on Bokosh, you learn a lot about the other squad, and... I mean, Davenport, after that map number one, I know it's a heartbreaker proper, but I wouldn't kind of hang your chin low. You know, I would kind of keep your chin up high after that one. Yeah, look, we, we knew. Even you and I talked about it. Bokaj is the king of mixiness, or I guess the queen as it may be, as it is grandma's map. But I think that you have to mostly look at the simple fact that hard points were not going to be the, the victory factor no. for Davenport. If you could somehow steal a hard point away, well, then you're dancing. But to be able to keep it that close, just knowing that at least you have the gunny and the overall mechanical skill, to be able to do that versus Rutgers, it was just, you know, tight knitting a lot of these small moments to be able to close things out. That's something that a quick VOD will be able to study out for Davenport as a whole going forward for them, though. You have to somehow translate that in towards a Berlin search and destroy, because if we're being candid here, having gun skill is one thing. Having good setups and good communication, then follow through off the execution. Well, that's where it is the big stark difference in between a respawn and the search and destroy game mode. Fishing for information, keeping your life. That was at an all time high for Rutgers there towards the tail end of the second set of hardpoint, and especially in the third set, it came down to the wire at the very, very end of the Bokash. Hey, they almost snuck away with that hardpoint, and if they found that. I don't even know what I'd be thinking about the, the map set going forward. But heading into this Berlin, I mean, you're looking at Rutgers. This is the best search and destroy for their record. 
there's a good moment for the Panthers to maybe be able to bounce back on this map. Well, one big thing on Berlin, I know it, it's a lot to talk about, but specifically the post plants. You know, on both teams, I think I'm going to be judging them by that. If you can get control of the B site, that post plant is going to be a deadly one. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the B site is almost the checkmate type situation, right? And I don't mean the map from Cold War. I mean, in chess, uh, it, you have to be looking at these certain factors that if you get that bomb planted and of course break those doors you don't like those doors over by the oh. bee hut you get a player over by the warehouse you get a player on top of the inside of the uh the boathouse and you can completely shut down any post plan situation because it takes so much time colin for these teams defensively to try to retake that b site and to be candid here you could also do the same thing with the a site if you're a team that is carry a depth at a holding on towards your ordinances specifically your frag grenades you can absolutely wipe the floor with a lot of players that are trying to go for the defuse over by the a bomb you just almost have to uh take a guess eh, whether or not they're actually on that side of the bomb plant or if you just plant it properly for backside of fire and you get yourself in that position but the b bomb site is where a lot of players a lot of teams even specifically specifically excuse me here in the ccl try to go for just because you can work those very quick plants, you can find a lot of good suppressive fire across that B lane, and you could just have your ARs or your uh, your R98 K players, your snipers, kick their feet up on top of that warehouse inside the boathouse and just wait for the challenges to come to them. Is it is it weird, Andy, that I totally forgot about checkmate? Like until you just said it, like it was wiped right out of my mind. <laughs> It's kind of like jogging a lot of memories. I wouldn't know if they're good memories or bad memories, but they're memories. Who knows? For sure about that. But you no, know, you make a good point. Break the doors on this one. I mean, we could talk about, you know, bring out the snipers, you know, try to push your SMGs aggressively. You know, whatever you do, just make sure you break those doors at the B side. I, I can't imagine how many times, even in my own rank games, that people don't break the doors. And it costs so many rounds that you could walk away with. There's going to be a big thing to look at if we are walking into the post plans toward the B site. A site, I mean, we don't normally see a whole lot of action there recently. Unless you really want to get mixy inside the offices, but... We're gonna have to see now that we're hopping into map number two you're looking at a bounce back potential for davenport panthers a really close bokash hard point that i hope you didn't miss and if you did i mean 250 to 236 that should tell you enough i'm excited for this map number two proper i i honestly i think that this is going to be a really big moment for the panthers yeah i think that davenport panthers should go to a look they got the better gunnies coming off of that bokash hard point and why not try to keep things mixy and keep uh dr z sports Especially guessing we'll have to see as it's actually Davenport on the offense first they will barrel their way inside of mail try to get some information the biggest adversary going forward is going to be Ryuga who ever so politely closes the window behind them waiting for the challenge to come through first blood anthrax answers back what a shot onto Ryuga hyper is looking to get aggressive cut off that player so keeping numbers in the favor of Scarlet Knights it is going to keep Davenport Panthers guessing on where to go. Sheldon looks like he wants to pull this back, and he does. We go even Steven 2v2, but now Sheldon's in a really weird position. He's going to be looking to get pressure. Now Pagecko comes to the rescue, and now Hybrid in a 1v2. Look at it clutch up. He at least knows where both of these players are proper, so an idea of where he needs to set up. Davenport, I, I don't know if they're going to be ready for Hybrid, but honestly, he just needs to chill. Oh, it's so smart. Just wait outside. I mean, the only timing that he's going to be missing is if they go completely around the backs of the warehouse. Oh, no. Gonna be the case. Oh, this is the time again. Oh, he no. See them leave. He's not going to see the other one leave either. Sheldon's on the complete opposite side of the train tracks. Nobody I mean, from his team is just screaming at him. There's no way that they would still be in there. You got to understand that you got to start going back towards that A side, son. With 15 seconds, you, you think they're not going to be. Bomb goes down at A now. Time in the favor of the Panthers and numbers. So Hybrid, he's got a big mountain to climb right now. Cutting it right through the middle of the map. Spots out Sheldon. 1v1. He's going to be ready for this gunfight. It looks like he just passed them. Ships sailing past each other in the distance. And Panthers, they're going to turn around to put up the first round. Oh, man, that was painful. This is the timing on the two players exiting, crossing. I mean, it would have been a speck, a pixel at that, that either it would have seen or one of their teammates have at least called out watching the death camera but even still right down towards the end was a basically an exclamation mark for the timing that was missed there at the very end for the last player in the upper courtyard will be gecko that gets the last laugh finds two in the round no less now's the scarlet knights turn for an offense Your standard stuff get inside mailroom see what information you can find but the panthers have read this completely you got three players over here but there's a great first blood gets answered back of course oh sheldon's got the boomstick and the anthrax he slipped the line 
Nobody's seen him in this position. Bomb's going down, but Anthrax is in a perfect spot to slay out for trade after this. Sheldon, here for the backup. So excellent position here. Bomb goes down. Ghost, stay alive on the inside. Yes, he can. Find Sheldon. Now numbers still in the favor of the Scarlet Knights, but Anthrax still looking to pull this back from the Panthers all the way deep. Trying to come to this is player from Warehouse. They have no post plant set up. It's a big moment now for both players from Panthers to be on the same side of the map for this, but in turn, adjusting are the Scarlet Knights as well. So they kind of flip this on its head. They find Gecko. Last alive is going to be Anthrax. He has dropped down to 23. That's a bounce back out of the Rockers if I've seen one. Yeah, absolutely was. Uh, I mean, the moment that they were able to at least isolate the first and try to at least cover out their back, it mostly just came down to hybrid, actually, uh, it, to be able to not only continuously finesse their life, but to be able to at least get as much information as possible across that B lane. They were able to do all of that, plus some more. Walk away with two in that round. Now, four and one total for hybrid. I have to see if there's any sort of adaptations coming through for Rutgers. If anybody's going to get aggressive to try to deny this B push coming forward, they're still going to try to commit this 2 1 1 setup. Two players inside of A, one over by the stairs. Ooh. Sheldon breaks out the car 98K again, finds first blood on the DB3. That is a wide open lane for teams to get aggressive. North finds the second. An uphill battle, to say the least, for the Scarlet Knights. That snipe was right through P5. Ivor gets some oh. good time. Oh, you gotta finish your food. At least he dies, but there's still players to watch out for. Slips out of there with his life, so. Killing 2v3. Ghost has the information of Gecko. Evens is up. Bomb goes down. Post plant's gonna be set up. Rutgers looking for the break, but Anthrax gonna find one. And on the opposite side, Panthers, they win both one-on-ones to go up back into the lead. This is all off of that first snipe, too. I mean, you, you almost assume. You saw the immediate turnaround on the minimap. That first snipe started to come through. There was one player that immediately had to give up their angle to try to go hover through the middle of the map. Because typically, if you find that pick on top fire, well, yeah. a lot of teams end up just full-on barreling their way in the backside of the lobby and try to get behind enemy lines. But, I mean, that, Panthers just executed so perfectly. They just end up finding that first pick. They find the second on the cross, and they just commit over towards that B site. Now, Rutgers Esports with the audible heading over towards the Zay site. And if you're Gecko, you got to at least go one for one in this position. He's got a lot to work on. Is spotted out in a rough spot now. Hunt is on. Looks to clean him up. Gecko still finds his one. So there. Job well done. Here comes the cavalry. North's going to find a second. North's going to find another one as well. Doubles down to put ZB3 against the wall. And 1v3. Trapped on all angles. Panthers, they're not going to let this one slip out of their claws. They're going to go up 3-1 to one and take the biggest lead yet in the search and destroy. That was a five-head play coming through from Gecko. They immediately get themselves out from the side door. They... Actually got shot in the ankle of all things, and then they immediately just lay down on the, the concourse stairs and just wait for somebody to assume the one thing that Gecko did not do, and they did not go back up those back staircases uh, towards the upper courtyard. They completely finessed their life, and then immediately, even after all that information was found by Gecko, you saw immediately just them poor Panthers just completely pounced on the rotation. Now they're going to take their hand today. But anything you can do, I can do better. Gecko is going to pull first blood. It was a trade at a ZB3, so still a little bit of a tussle to go through. Hybrid pulls one out from Anthrax. Still going back and forth into this. Finally, numbers two rockers as the dust settles. It's Sheldon dropping to put Gecko in a 1v2 on four in a row. Proper. So if you find both of these skills, you're going to lock down a strafing run. Would be massive. I mean, you got 50 seconds essentially to try to exhaust the rest of this round. Yeah, I was about to say maybe you just put yourself all the way in the back, or is he gonna try to commit towards this clutch? He's Yo. feeling it. Ah, uh, well, he, he was something he probably it. shouldn't have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things again where it's just like you know you got rounds to play with. Obviously, you were probably gonna lose that round. It was a very big uphill battle, a very big testament. I mean, Gecko absolutely fried in that uh, opening of Bokash hardpoint, but even still. That is just one of those things where, you know, you let your gunny do all the talking for you, where you just have to think a little bit when it comes down to search and destroy. One kill away, two from another streak, and Gecko probably would have had the ace up their sleeves to be able to really force Rucker's hand for at least so many different opportunities for their retakes and their for their bomb site takes on offense. Speaking of that, going back towards that round one strat, they're going to put themselves inside a mail room again, but the difference for the Panthers this time around is you got one player of Anthrax trying to get a little bit wildly over by the statue. Ooh, Shelton. Find that kill. You'd be in a really good spot for the post plant, or the retake, that is. 
Nice nade at Anthrax. Well placed. Gonna find Ryuga. Bomb still goes down to the follow up of the Sheldon. That's gonna be the green light to go. If you're the Panthers, Anthrax following on through. It's been flawless so far. Hybrid last one alive. Tucked away inside a mail room. Trying to be as sneaky as ever. With numbers against you, how much can you do? North already on the defuse. You're going to have to do a lot to get this. And walking into two players, that is not what you want to see. The defuse is going to come out, and the Panthers go right back in their comfort zone. Yeah, it's just a very tough instance in general. You know, Sheldon find those, finds those opening shots and essentially just completely hesitates the initial offense. And if you're hybrid in this last position, you would almost want them to make the right guess that they have to go out towards the warehouse door rather than the side door, not fully knowing that there was going to be two players. But... That's why it's over now. I've seen Rutgers commit towards that B site and the two players in the clutch positions in the backside of the boathouse, backside of the warehouse, get absolutely denied their post-plant positioning. Panthers just not allowing the Scarlet Knights to get too comfortable. Once Thrax on three, and back towards this B site, it's Rutgers trying to be the instigators this time around, but Panthrax Gecko, it simply will not allow you to get this map coverage for free. Oh, look at the sheer power of this team. Is the, the one-two punch. It's just something to watch out for. Anthrax looking to follow through as well with a combo. Finds Ghost now. Last one alive is going to be ZV3 and another 1v4 opportunity. The clutch shot. Sheldon already set up back. Trains. You can see all these players hunting for the last one. Anthrax going to spot him out. And that's six in a row at Anthrax. That's going to be a strafing run on board. And map point for Davenport. They're just making these rounds feel so fast. And you know, typically on defense where you see a lot of teams try to become the instigators at that point, try to barrel their way inside of the mailroom, knowing that that's where the push is going to be coming through. They just get completely denied. Drax now on six in a row has that strafe. I mean, that is a bomb denial if I've ever seen one. So you know that Rutgers, they have to commit towards eight if they are counting those kills. That looks like it's going to be the call. It is. Anthrax gets this glide bomb. That's going to slow up Rutgers even more. It's going to put themselves in a whale of hurt. Being, five, being down 5-2 is just something you can't let happen. And Anthrax is already behind them. Hybrid is going to catch him, so nothing more. When this dust settles inside, that is going to be 2v2. Barely scraping out of there is Ryuga. Catches the bomb on his way out. North inside of these offices, but look at Hybrid. And behind Sheldon, only a pistol. It's not the gun you want to have against an MP40. Hybrid's going to find Sheldon. 1v2, they're heading over to B. The smart rotation. Look, you took out Anthrax. You know that there's no streaks on the table. You basically force North's hand. To try to go for the retake. The better question is, are you going to be able to get yourself in a post fight situation? Because every single time we've been here so far, they just get cut off and they never get themselves in that superior position. Ooh. Right? Yuga's going to put themselves to the backside of the boathouse. North is going to take down Hybrid on the cross. If you're Ayoga, yeah, you just need to vibe. Wait. You just need to sit here. I mean, it, it's a guessing game at this point for North. And he's going to turn his back right there. It's perfect positioning out of Ryuga. And he's going to keep Rutgers alive. He's going to keep the Scarlet Knights inside Berlin search and destroy. And a big moment out of them as well. You don't want to let this go too far into the favor of Davenport. You want to make sure it's competitive in this map too. Yeah, I mean, you just... Are basically looking at what the Scarlet Knights have to do is basically flawless search and destroy going forward. I mean, if they, they slip up ever so slightly, they give the Panthers a numbers advantage. You know they're going to get aggressive. Thrax pushing a little bit too close to the sun, trying to get a little bit like Icarus in that previous round. Still has the strafing run in their back pocket. You know they want to put themselves on B. Make this very easy for them, but are actually just getting completely aggressive with the bottom side of the staircase. And yeah, Thrax... You gotta relax here, buddy. Didn't have any help for that trade. Well, you gotta chill there, bud. A little bit too fast. Maybe he forgot his Timmy's order on the way back. Gecko trades it out. Still, numbers to the Rutgers. The bomb hasn't gone to the B site. In fact, North hasn't even made a move to try to get there. I'm looking at Hybrid. I'm looking at, sorry, Gecko to make this happen. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. He's got the bottle and everything. Arioga just gave it to him. He knows it's a bar fight out here against the Panthers. And now Gecko last alive. He's going to get spotted out as well. Scar Scarlet Knights, they're keeping it going. Look, again, this goes back to what I was talking about at the top of the broadcast is that I mean, there's a lot of instances and a lot of times where Davenport Panthers, they get themselves in situations like this where you know, they, they just might be feeling themselves a little bit too much and they put themselves in one-dimensional instances like this that is just very easily read. And, you know, not to say that Thrax won't win that gunfight Maybe five times out of ten, half of the time, sure. It's just a gunfight that's not necessary to take. 
Not when you have this big of a lead. I mean, you've allowed Rutgers Esports to take this within one. Rutgers Esports are actually still committing towards this B site. Keep in mind, you, Drax still has that strafe run in their back pocket. Kind of trapped here. I love this play to Gecko and Anthrax. All the way around the back. Set up top third, ZB3. Perfect to shut it down. Numbers to the Scarlet Knights. Bombs going down at B. Sheldon keeping things even. Time being, bomb will be planted. The biggest player to watch out for is actually Ryuga in the back side of the warehouse. They have to maintain their oh, life. No. Which is coming across the street. Sheldon finds hybrid, so Panther is in a good spot for the retake. North, can he win this out? He oh. does. That's going to open up the B zone. Ryuga set up for the post plant, no. but he's got the MP40. He knows he has to get close and get personal, and he's just not allowed to. Davenport Panthers, they're going to close out map two, six to four, and they are going to send us even in the series. Crazy what happens when you have Anthrax just going rogue on the beginning of a round, I guess. But like at the same at the same time, it's just, it's just one of those things that even if you have the MP40, look, I know that they nerfed its effective range, so like you're not four bulleting people past like 15 meters. But at that point, like you you have to you have to look at one thing in particular is that you just have to play the positioning first and foremost. That even if you find the opening shots. That player is going to be laying prone. You should be able to at least lock down those first four bullets, the, at least the fifth, before they even can guess whether you're coming through the top side of the window or the bottom side over by the fence line or inside the boathouse. There just wasn't enough time for them to be able to clear out all those different angles and flood, find the kill, plus the defuse at the same time. You just had to find that first kill on top of the bomb planter, or on the bomb diffuser, excuse me. And you just have to try to hightail your ass out of there to try to keep it alive. But I think that you're just witness... Uh, what Davenport have been able to put themselves in, in a position for, and that is just one simple fact, is that they completely outgunning and outmaneuvering their Rutgers Scarlet Knight opponents. And that's something that we did witness in the Bocot Search and Destroy. It's just, you know, obviously in a game mode with no respawns, no favorite spawns, no way to easily reinforce the, any sort of power position for its own self. Davenport Panthers, they were able to recognize we got the better mechanical skill. We're just going to completely gun them down a little bit more of, I guess, a, a fundamental way as what I've seen in previous games for the Panthers, but they look good doing it, evening things up here, one apiece. They look good indeed. Both teams look good right now as we're heading into a map number three. You're watching CCL Alpha Stream in stage two, folks. We got Gavit 2 Control coming up next, a swing map. You don't want to miss it. A quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back, folks, to the CCL Alpha Stream. We're watching Davenport Panthers sitting at number 20 on the power rankings versus the Rutgers Scarlet Knights sitting at number 13 on the power rankings. One-to-one -one tied up between both maps proper. It has been nothing but close. Let's take a look at what we've had through the series. Talk to me a little bit about what we got. Yeah, you know, the Bokosh hardpoint honestly could have been a toss-up for either of these two teams to finally gain an edge over one another. It honestly would have came down to the game clock a handful of more times than... Probably either of these two teams really wanted to. Davenport definitely had a superior lead, and I say superior, it was like 20 points or so, but that's so superior when it comes out of Bokosh throughout the end of the first set. Rutgers came back with a reckoning and a half, but I'm in that Berlin search and destroy. It was quite telling just for uh, how exploitative I, I would say that Davenport Panthers play their search and destroy. They are not afraid to get their hands dirty, even in the early rounds, recognizing that they definitely had the better gunny, knowing that they could absolutely take down their adversaries of the Scarlet Knights by superior mechanical skill, and that's exactly what ends up happening. They didn't even really have to outsmart them. It was just the Rutgers, uh, it was just Rutgers University that were just putting themselves in positioning. They get absolutely gunned from range a handful of more times. That leads us into that Gavutu control, which honestly, I said that Bokash Hardpoint was a toss-up. This quite literally will be a toss-up unless oh, well. one of these teams win an offensive round early. I talked about how personal, you know, you get on Bokash. And you can see that Anthrax, he learned a little bit of something. You know, inside the Berlin, he was very confident with those gunfights. Just flying at them, he knew he could outgun the, his opponents, and he did a lot of that time. And sitting here, 1-1, one, one, going into basically the love child of Hardpoint Answer to Destroy. I'm really looking at uh, Davenport, if they want to take the swing map, keep up with that pace. You've had fantastic gun skill, just keep it going one of those things though i mean on gavutu historically for the panthers they've struggled with because a lot of their power you saw through that bokosh hard playing gecko went on was it a nine spree through their first life mp40 Thrax, the amount of value that they were finding 
through Berlin Search and Destroy, MP40. This is a big map. This is a big boy map, and you really got to be it smart is. with your timings to understand where you can put yourself with an MP40 to be able to take these gunfights. And again, it is still effective. It's not as effective as what it was a couple weeks ago. The MP40, obviously, with your sole SMG player, and sometimes teams will end up running a second, can still find value with those medium close range gunfights, but you really have to lean on them when it comes down to breaking these hard points. And you have to be very, very smart and aware when those timings are going to be available for the SMG players to be able to get themselves inside of Money Hills like 3, to be able to get inside of the LST ship for P2, and to be able to maintain their life. And the same thing could be said when we're talking about breaking holding 5 breaking four at the same time that's where your smgs can absolutely come to life but this is where your flexes and your ars absolutely have to be locked in to be able to find themselves those longer medium range engagements make sure that the floodworks are always open for the rest of the team to be able to move forward i mean both of these two teams they haven't really had um losses or too many losses on this map i mean panthers in stage one they were one and one on gavitude control Rutgers, they were one and oh on gavitude control so Neither team, you know, is really afraid to go to this map. But, I mean, you make a big point. And a couple weeks ago, I even heard you say proper is that, you know, Vanguard in its own, it's favorable to flex players. And you can even do one better. And you can say when you go to Gavitu, you really need those flex players to turn up. Oh, absolutely. Because they're the ones that need to make the decision. Am I pulling out an MP40? Going into P2? Do I need this submachine gun to be able to finesse my life? Or am I going to be that... Route man flex player that a lot of the players all the way up to challengers and hell even the CDL have been able to make a name for themselves so far in Vanguard. They, the route man absolutely gets paid when it comes down to Gavutsu because we know how difficult it honestly can be when it comes down to break these money hills of three, four, and even five with the way that those spawns are manipulated all the way on the east and west side of the map for three, five, and four respectfully. Without those glide bombs, without even the strafe run, as it is still being used here in North America, uh, you're mostly going to be looking at a lot of these teams to try to do it through raw gun skill. Easier said than done. We saw both of these teams, specifically more Davenport, I would say, more struggle to try to break up the culture spawns, even on a map like Bokaj. But when setups were there for Davenport, specifically through that second set, Rutgers were absolutely coming to life to be able to break a multitude of setups. And I bring up that one point specifically... We're starting a little podcast while the floppy gets a little bit uh, repopulated here yeah. for you folks at home. Because when it comes down to control, where teams struggle to be able to break inside a lot of these setups offensively, it's because they're treating it as just what it is. Just trying to find themselves a couple kills. They don't maintain their life. But you have to look at it as if you're trying to break a hard point as if you were playing it on Gavutu. If you're trying to get into the back of the B zone, get that in your favor... You're mostly looking to break P5. Once you get in the backside of green, and you break inside P3, if you see where I'm going with this, so that way you can then manipulate the spawns on those defensive teams to be on the south side that you have the superior map positioning. We just see teams here in the CCL just get way too squirrely, way too fast, yeah. and they find that one kill, and they think that they're God, and they just completely start flying at players. You have to be able to recognize when you can find that one kill and bait out the second to come all the way through, you have to play it as if you were the offensive team trying to break a hard point on Gavutu control if you want to find success, specifically when two teams are as close as they are here. It's like what I said to Jesse yesterday in our cast is it's like you're making a, a grocery list, you know, when you beforehand. You want to make sure that you're getting what you need and you're doing it step by step to get there. Also, it's going to get expensive. You're going to lose a little bit more than you really wanted to lose going into that. So you got to make sure you got that list. You go step by step. You're doing it as a team. And you're making sure that you're doing it well. But folks, I mean, it looks like we're getting things ready into this Gavitu. I mean, if you're looking at more action for CCL, don't forget, we got the Bravo stream as well. Twitch.tv slash college caught Bravo. But I mean, you can go take a look at that. Or you can take a look at this control. Or both at the same time, we got Davenport Panthers, Rutgers Esports. Looking at the swing map already off the breakoff. Rockers looking to overextend over the B zone. And actually, they are getting some progress here. Goes to set up inside there. And you can see off of this aggression, Ryuka, wow. he's looking to push right up into their spawn. Yeah, and North is still maintaining this positioning on top ring as well. And you would assume that that would have been a great position for Davenport to be able to deny these players inside the B zone. But Ghost is just laying on their belly, staying alive. Actually finds a big kill on the get-go. Of course, we'll lose their life now to a... Frag grenade. 
just shy of getting that second tick, but Hybrid keeps the play alive. Here it is. They get back over towards the B zone. The second tick of progress has been given over into your Davenport. You just can see oh. this. Well, you might have to at this point, considering the simple facts, EB3 is still top LST ship. The B zone might be tacked all the way over, barring for that 1v1 that happens off screen. And it sure will. Davenport Panthers, they do the impossible through the opening rep Seymour. They got a four life lead and the more difficult of the two zones uh, to take. What a moment on offense now. You gotta put all your eggs into one basket if your Panthers and that's, I mean, the lesser of two. It's the A zone that you're looking to lock down. I've seen teams do it plenty of times, but it is a troublesome feat to achieve. Three go down. Still no map control. Gecko finding Hyper there should allow him to take control off cliffside, but... I mean, while this is happening, I mean, Scarlet Knights, they're making a fantastic raid on this. They're pushing the spawns of Panthers through ring. I actually respect what we're seeing from the Davenport Panthers, specifically from Anthrax, who, keep in mind you as an MP40, is trying to at least zone away this arch rock, and they're actually going to be able to walk away with two more kills. Six and three now for them, finds another engagement, and almost finds a very difficult gunfight to be able to walk away with, but they're able to do it. That marginalizes the lead that Davenport Panthers were actually facing as far as the deficit for lives off the B zone. Now you got Gecko on a five spree, keeping this going for Davenport Panthers defensively, keeping the Scarlet Knights Whoa. at bay. Oh my God. I thought Radio was about to do that. It seems like he'd do no harm in certain situations. Gecko finally going to drop. They didn't see if he achieved that score or kill streak or not, but an opening to stop this clock. Anthra is going to drop to one of the red barrels. You see Scarlet Knights, they have control of LST ship. Ryuga is going to step foot inside of the A zone. Stop this time at 39 seconds. Three lives remaining for the Panthers as I'm kind of looking at this. They have no respawns left and pushing this one by one. That's not going to be the recipe to success. But only one player remaining. Gecko hunting him is Ghost. And Rutgers, a big offensive round to open up the control. It's a life lead. It, was in, it wasn't as much as I'm sure that they probably wanted, but still a life lead, no less. You're going to continuously hear us talk about that as this Kabutu control does progress, given one simple thing, that Davenport and Hell have to actually win an offensive round, which if you can tell by the cater by voice is uh, not easy to do. So I think that oh, you're no. going to end up uh, trying to see Davenport try to get aggressive over towards the B zone. Maybe. They're actually going to go over the safety route. They're going to go over towards A, try to extend the clock safely as possible. But the reason why we talk about eliminations is that that update is still weeks away. We end up moving our way over towards Tick. Still have to play this with a lot of kills and those lives remaining in mind as the round progresses. Oh, Anthrax is just kind of testing Hybrid around that. Beat down from Hybrid. That's going to be the go-ahead for a second. Clears off the A-Zone, only giving up one take of progression. Ryuga here looking to put the nail in the coffin for that first offense. And that's going to be a three quick kills go down. You see one player did overextend over to B and actually collects a take of progress on the B zone as well. And in doing so, it's going to pull the Scarlet Knights back and allow Panthers a little bit of breathing room to get back into the ship. The biggest issue now is you have Ghost with ring control. And with these respawns coming back from back green, it's actually all happening off screen. That Ghost is actually finding a lot of spawn kills and they have to deal with them. They'll finally be able to cut them down. And while this is all happening, Thrax, as you've been witnessing, is still maintaining this top LST bow control. Now the reinforcements are able to work their way across the Arch Rock, but we essentially just switched positions. EB3 is now on top of the LST ship. And now it comes down to Anthrax to constantly berate pressure on the backside of green. But this is a lot of trust that the rest of the Panthers can get out of their spawn and get to these zones to stop the clock. It's a tango, and I don't know who's leading at this point proper. It seems like both these teams, they want to be leading the dance. And it's definitely a fight that I love to see out of both these squads. It's a big map to see who can take the lead heading into the hard point. And now Scarlet Knights finding some ground after a little bit of a stumble. They find two, and Ghost is in such a strong position to cut off these players. Coming off the respawn, he's going to find Gecko. Can he find North as well? No, the Trey's going to be out. Sheldon's on the A zone, so the time stopped at 28 seconds. Look for the third tick. Here comes Ryuga, clears him off. Looking for more. It's not going to be there. Three go down. North gets back onto A. 25 seconds remaining, 16 v 14. You really need this last tick to come all the way through. Do we even try to recontest this if you are Rutgers? Look, you've got to maintain this. I think so. By any stretch of the imagination, you're absolutely right, Colin. I, I don't think so, and I know so. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be watching top ring, because now Gecko completely barrels their way down the beach front. There's already one take to speak over by B. Luckily enough, Ghost picks it up. It completely resets the map, but that one take lurking over at B. One good hit for Davenport Panthers to stop that clock once again and get themselves present across the map. 
Look, it's electric right now. The Panthers, they're looking to turn up the dial and take control of this B zone. A minute to do so. Down by three lives. It's not going to be easy. Ghost has control of ring. Sheldon, outer, outside of beach, has a lot to do to allow a little bit of a go-ahead for the Panthers to escape this. But again, this is what you're talking about. Top Alice T-Ship. It's very strong for an AR to be at ZB3 in a very big power position. Finds Gecko, slows this down. Slow it down continuously, but the problem is that you still have players still lurking past the beachfront. They ain't no lifeguard on this beach here in the Solomon Isles because Sheldon is able to get back here. Almost got free, stops the clock, does find one. It's going to actually pull Ryuga back. Be able to deal with them. 35 seconds remaining, one respawn remaining. Double the lives. One solid hit. It's going to have to be flawless for the Panthers to bounce back for offense. 27 seconds, Anthrax leading the charge to lose it on Gecko. It's one for one. Hybrid has actually slipped the line. Anthrax is going to get in. Finds Hybrid. It stops the clock. But even still, they're losing out on numbers now. Only two lives remaining. It's going to have to be a superstar moment from one of them. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case here. ZB3 hops in for the connection. Denies this progress so far on 30 HP. Shooting through this tank. Anthrax, he's got to be careful here. He's got a lot of pressure in. Rockers, they tumble on in. They take over control. And they're going to be up 2-0. A massive life lead too. I mean, a reverse sweep here in control on Gavutu, no less, is, um, well, if winning an offensive round was uh, no easy feat, then this uh, almost feels like it's impossible. I feel like there's, I've seen, like, maybe 10% of the games. I've casted a lot of Vanguard since it's released, Colin. You know this about me. And maybe about 10% yes, of the Gavutu controls, I've honestly seen a reverse sweep happen. It is very doable. And I've seen it happen a handful of times, but the way that Rutgers are just maintaining the space and catching Davenport off guard it's actually coming through from what I was saying the ARs the flexes are absolutely activated for Rucker Esports 14 and 9 for ZB3 18 and 12 for Ryuga and Ghost is also having a field day 17 and 10 in stripe kill free to start things off North will find three off the opening engagement we'll maintain the space for now pushing all of Scarlet Knights back to spawn hey, Scarlet Knights no monkey business on Kava 2 the Panthers struggling to sink their fangs right now into this map it's troublesome for the respawn so far. Full three down. It's going to give the go-ahead. Stop the clock at mid-13. Working on progressions on both zones as well proper. So, in a little bit of panic mode if you're the Panthers. Hyper is inside their spawn. You can see those spawns coming up through the dock side. They're going to be able to hit the A side. And look at that rebuttal. Three go down. They're going to take the players off the A zone. But they still got to worry about ZB3 over at B. You got to concede this. I mean, they conceded what it felt like a few moments ago because they're still scrapping through the middle of the map aren't they i mean b zone goes over again and we're gonna have to see a full a zone defense coming out from davenport panthers and look they stretched that last one for a long time and the lives were further gone then now the panthers have a three life lead you have a lot of players constantly berating the spawn and maybe this is the win condition for the panthers just completely parade their flanks and always end up finding one if not two kills because it keeps on splitting up the focus for the Scarlet Knights off the respawn through the jungle walk. They're trying to get their way back towards his LST ship, but again, another flank play ensues. A pinch play happens. North and Thrax, they combine for four. It wasn't the recipe to success in round one, but a life lead in round three. This is looking A-OK. -okay. Thrax again finds Ryuga. Nice help from Gakko. Three down once more. Nine lives to 19. An overextension of ZB3. He's going to find a hit fire out of Sheldon. Was not expecting that. Gonna pull some players away. Anthrax is gonna clean that up. The old players dropping like flies here for the Scarlet Knights. Ryuga on the hunt for Anthrax. Gonna find him as well. Let's see if they can turn this into anything. Seven lives. It's gotta be near perfect if they want to sweep the Panthers off their feet. Inside of this, Ryuga's gonna hop in. Stops clock in a minute two. It's gonna draw some eyes over Sheldon. Information. What is this? Nobody's home. The kills come through, and it's still Panthers doing fantastic in this round. Four lives to 14. I mean, even if they don't drop a life from now on, I, I feel like they're really pulling this back from the kills factor. Yeah, they really are. This was a big round. And not just a big round for, you know, obviously to get themselves to stay alive with the control, heaven's sake. Exactly. But to also, like, maintain any sort of resemblance of hope that if it goes down to a round five, that at least they took a giant dent in towards the lives department. That was a big plus 10. Coming through for Davenport. And you're going to have to try to maintain that momentum going forward. I mean, pinstripe kill feeds are great when it comes down to defense. But uh, when it comes down towards the offense, this is where you need to be concise as an entire team. Almost like what we saw in, in the meat and potatoes of that round, Colin. Uh, for Davenport, the way that we saw North and Anthrax working off of one another, 
absolutely came to lo came to life for the Panthers when they needed them the most. They just simply can't vanish on this offensive attack. They have to be able to convert this if they want to stay alive here in the swing map mode if you're the Gabuzu control. I'm still kind of thinking about that lifeguard opportunity in the Solomon Isles. That, that's still on my mind. That sounds dangerous. I wonder what the credentials would be for, for that. Especially at this time, you know, with this map and how crazy it gets at times. It, it would definitely be a tough one to police, but I mean, for the Panthers, they've done a great job at staying in this so far. An opportunity to the A zone. Ryuka's going to shut that down. Only one tick was gained, and you still have pressure out here. Ryuka doesn't know where to look. He's finally going to find Anthrax, but it's too little too late. Hopping back on the A zone. They're looking to put this away. Put this, at least the zone away. And if you're Rutgers Esports, again, you know, we, we asked about this, whether or not they would think about trying to hit this one more time. It is a Ooh. high risk potential for reward. Hybrid, we switch away from him. He actually loses that gunfight. While well, the battle was actually ensuing over by the B zone, they don't find that first tick over at B. So we're still okay if we are the Scarlet Knights, given the fact that Hybrid quite literally threw their life away in the most glorious fashion I could only imagine. To be able to get those last two players off of the A zone. And Panthers thought they were scot-free away from getting themselves that A zone. The extra 60 seconds, but just like that, a snap of the fingers. Rutgers Esports got themselves that two-life lead on the defensive side. And yeah, no need to panic. Unless you're Davenport right now, you need to get something going soon. But Scarlet Knights, they can breathe. For now, 34 seconds, 19 to 17. Gecko's gonna get caught. Three go down once more. Making a full four. Why not? 27. And, and this is. Forget everything I said. Panic time for Panthers. They gotta get going. E to start flying across this map. 17 seconds remaining. They are losing all of the lives this side of the Mississippi Colin. It is about to be all done and dusted. Streaks are being Line called bomb. in. Glide bombs coming through and towards the back. North needs to activate the rest of the team. They need the 60 seconds. One last opportunity. A hefty life lead. And one giant Mount Everest to climb. Gecko is going to find Ghost. Let's see if they can go big here. Hybrid on the poop. Yeah, Gecko is going to catch him to go down. Six seconds remaining. They got to go big. They got to go flawless so far on the inside. It is going to be 6v13 so far. Panthers holding on to the time. But here comes break once more. ZB3 in the staircase. Shots are going to be ready. Throw a Gecko. A little bit of a buddy hop. He's going to keep things alive. A zone gets secure. But again, you just keep looking at that life lead and you wonder, is it possible? I know Optic can do that, but I mean, that's Optic. Well, five lives in between these two teams. Hybrid will take down Thrax, so... Said they needed to be flawless previously. One good kill will put Ooh. it away. There it is on the Sheldon, and it is all just falling by the wayside. 2v8, look. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's all <laughs> really, really difficult to do if you are the Panthers, and just as soon as you try to make the play happen, Raids will be coming through. Rutgers Esports winning that opening offense set the pace for this Kavutu control. They played it so smart, Thrax might be able to get a consolation kill or two here at the end, but it would be a her Herculean effort, to say the least, to try to convert that as an offensive round. Rutgers Esports 3-1 on the Kavutu control. They will take a 2-1 lead here in the series in a glorious fashion, setting the pace early, maintaining that life lead, Getting that B zone, not once, but twice on over first, although they didn't get to the second offense as far as a round win is concerned. It's still impressive to see the veracity that the teamwork can work together off of one another just from the flexes and the picks that they were finding across the board. What do you know? You take an offensive round on Gava 2 control and you're in the comfort zone for the rest of it. You just need to win your defenses at that point. It got a little bit scary at times towards that fourth round but i mean scarlet knights they just kind of double back they say hey we're in the lead we got the advantage let's just calm down and take these gunfights properly i mean hybrid you said it yourself i mean it's very doable it needs to be perfect and then he comes around he finds not one but two kills to deny respawns from the panthers and he does one better and he cuts on the rest so so let's take a look at the stats for that. You know, it's going to be really telling for what we got, especially from the Scarlet Knights side. But, I mean, again, you, you might think that, but relatively, even on the Bokosh hardpoint and both respawns at this point, the slang, it's been even. Yeah, there, there really hasn't been a clear and concise breadwinner, I would say. You know, the biggest difference for me, again, is that when it comes down to the Gavutu control, even comparatively to, say, even the Bokosh hardpoint, right? SMG playground versus a Flex's playground. And you got to see players like Anthrax come 
absolutely to life. And, and even North there at the end, albeit 24-28, not the sexiest KD ratio. They have dropped all CCL regular season so far. I think that you're going to be looking at a certain instance that there is opportunity to be able to play Bokaj in a different manner to off the kills. You can obviously reinforce the map a lot sooner given, you know, the size difference in between the two. But when it comes down to Gavutu control, there were a lot of opportunities, ample opportunities for Davenport to be able to take the space if they just conceded another two, three seconds or so. Going forward off of that, they might have been able to not only maintain their life count, might have been able to stop those D-zone captures to come through continuously. Well, take a look at the maps, folks, that we've had throughout the series. I mean, it's been a close one out of both these squads. They've been basically going kind of pound for pound for maps at this moment. Yeah, three to one on Gavin to control. Seems relatively simple for the Scarlet Knights, but the Panthers, they did put up a fight in that. And I like that you're bringing up the point that Toskin, it's a bigger map than Bokaj. It's going to be a different map for Hardpoint as well. And yeah, the Panthers, they looked like they were able to keep it competitive inside the Bokaj, but I'm a little bit scared for them going into the Toskin. It's going to be a lot more fundamental. And back in that Bokaj Hardpoint, a lot of the times Rutgers were the ones focusing on rotations. You said it perfectly. Took the words right out of my brain, man. Tuscan Hardpoint, comparatively to Bokaj. Call it the mixiness in the cage for a reason. You can 100% play off of the kills more often than not there. Tuscan Hardpoint, if one player is going off on a five spree, to try to flip out everything on this map single-handedly is rarely done. Not when two work. teams are this close here on CCL. It just doesn't work. You have to be fundamentally sound on Tuscan Hardpoint. You have to be able to have the faith and the teamwork behind you while those plays are happening. Mostly looking at what Gecko was able to do on Bokaj, but they dropped somewhere near like 43, 45 kills for the L. And if you're able to do that on Tuscan, that's great. But if the rest of the team isn't behind Gecko or Sheldon or North or Anthrax, pick your poison. I've seen all four of these players be able to do it for Davenport. The rest of the team needs to be behind them, reinforcing the play, making it stick if they want to be able to get in for some crucial and some money time there on two, three, and hell, even four, if they can find all the kills around the corners. And I've got a little bit of time in the past to talk to these players on the Panthers, and they've been playing with each other for a very long time. I know the chemistry's there. I know that they have the opportunity to work as a team, but at this point, heading into Tuscan, I mean, teamwork's all good. I need a leader on the squad to make sure that you're focusing on those rotations, that you're not letting the Scarlet Knights get one step ahead of you. You can't just rely on bullying your way through this. Not against a team like Rutgers. Not when you are the underdog in this story. It's going to have to be a big showing out of Davenport in my eyes. And they want to see that Tuscan search and destroy. I mean, they're really going to need to step up to the plate. They do. Absolutely. Look, 235 is what I said that Davenport Panthers were essentially going to be looking at to try to close it out. Well, now you have no choice. You have to seal a hard point. And it has to be on Tuscan. And to be fair, when I was casting Davenport over Michigan back in stage one, this was a very tight affair, and they looked very good on it. Specifically, Thrax looked really good on it, and you need to be able to find that so that same form here because Rutgers Esports, as far as a fundamental sound hard point team is concerned, I mean, they're all that plus a bag of chips. But through the opening rip, they actually started off on the favorite side, did the Scarlet Knights, but Davenport, they just completely run them over it inside of you. Run into Thrax like that will absolutely rock bottom you through the cobblestone floor. I do like a bag of chips. Won't lie. We'll see the Scarlet Knights. They are all of that. Good moment of the Panthers to gain a lead through the first hill. But eyes are going to be on the rotations. And Scarlet Knights, they've been able to flip out these spawns. They are going to have the setup going next. And through Davenport, you got to fly. Get going. It's a good moment. Finds the kill through the bottom. Forces EV3 to challenge this one with an automaton at that. And he makes it look simple. He makes that AR look like an SMG. The fire's not bad. I'm not saying not, that much. Not. I mean, like, I'll, say, I'll say what I'll say. And on land, it's a little bit different. That's what a lot of the pros were telling me. It's uh, major number one. But even still, the fire ain't bad. Going in towards B2, this is one of those money hills we're going to be talking about. Both spawns in effect for the Scarlet Knights. But I mean, Panthers out here are just... Relentless on striking down through the top flat. They absolutely clear out the backside of charge. That forces all of Scarlet Knights to spawn closer towards the well. And all Davenport Panthers have rent this completely. Gecko now on three. Thrax is on four. 
for their third life, and they are just, and they can't, they can't okay. do no wrong. I, you, maybe you can pull your way through this map. You know, they're looking fantastic. Anthrax on five in a row. Make it six in a row. It's going to be a strafing run. Can't get the glide bomb, but behind him, trailing not too far. It's going to be Gecko on four. Finally, a break from the Scarlet Knights for the scrap time, but... I mean, this is what I was looking for the Panthers. This is exactly what I asked for. A rotation, a setup, and they are in a perfect spot. Although, Hybrid is looking to spearhead his way through this armor. It is going to be shut down, and, and now Panthers set up perfectly. I think what we're starting to witness for the Panthers is that not only... It, it's not just one bully, right? It is a schoolyard chain gang is? of bullies, man. They are just working and flying together. One person at a time is just leading the charge, and the rest of them are following suit. This is what I was talking about at the top end of the broadcast. If they want to find success in a hardpoint map like Tuscan, that's exactly what needs to start coming all the way through. But it was essentially the same start here on Tuscan that we saw on Bokaj. The Ruckers are quick off the bounce to be able to put themselves in position to try to contest some time. On P3, no less. I end up seeing ZB3 try to at least contest this one last time. If you can find some exit kills, that'd be good. That's one of the best headies in the game. Sheldon was on on top of that well. You cannot wall bang that sucker attached. As we now take our look at the rotation going over towards P4 inside the church. The way that I've been describing this lately, McCoy, oh. you gotta almost keep your head on a swivel. Get yourself inside the back. Get yourself those squad spawns. But the moment that Panthers start getting themselves some of those favorite spawn ins, Z Sports are very quick on the bounce to be able to deal with all of them. Well, they still got them. I don't think Ryuga realized it. Still kills going red. ZB3 is going to clean up Gecko. Now, Panthers spawning up towards P2. Still have to trek through this one. Still have to trek through the guns as well. This is a relatively even... It is a directly even game. Rutgers looking to push it to their lead now. Hybrid set up in the back. Good for one. Back into the hill. In and out. It seems finessing each other at the moment, but that's okay if you're Scarlet Knights because you're collecting as much time as you can and you're making Church look flawless for yourself. One last hit here for the Panthers to try to get in for, for the rest of the time, but all doors on lock. Everything eyes on for the Scarlet Knights. Ghost looking to pray away for the last one, but Anthrax looks like he's going to walk away with the scrap time. You know that meme of like the Pitbull coming, zooming in towards the bedroom and just like spinning around in like five circles really quickly and then just running back out the door? That's literally you know how P4 is supposed to be played. And Rutgers, they do a great job of just maintaining a lot of those doorways and making sure that the Panthers don't get in for free. But talk about a hard hill to break. You need to be able to know your nade bounce spots and you got to be able to collapse on top of it here inside of the communications building. And while two good opening kills do come through for Rutgers Esports, they have to recognize that they have numbers coming in through the bottom side, but might just be walking into a blunder as I say that. Davenport Panthers get absolutely slammed through the floorboards, and Rutgers Esports will be in for some good time. Still 30 seconds remaining in this zone. We say, love that dog. As much as I love that break. But it's Scarlet Knights. Here come Panthers to see if they can get back in. Hybrid, good for one, but only good for one. You need your teammates to come out big with a few kills to walk away with this. Still going to be a tussle inside. Still a little bit of a war inside of maps to walk away with this time. But Panthers, again, trying to slip away with the scrap time. ZB3 in here for the rest. 14 seconds. Look to be locked down as all the rest of the Davenport players are going to be heading over to the reset. Going in towards the second set again, very close between these two teams. Almost what we would expect coming away from that Bokosh hard point. I mean, it was such a marginal lead that Panthers held going in towards the second set, and it's the same, but this time for the Scarlet Knights. Five, eight seconds, that's not that big. It really does play a testament for how close these two teams absolutely are. Nice little slide coming through from Ghost off of the frag grenade. Nice little return to Sender coming through from Sheldon there. Inside of you would definitely have led some help if you are Gecko, but still holding on to the favorite side, you have a lot of better angles and opportunities to try to battle from if you are Rutgers Esports. And still a lot of time to fight for here on one. Here comes Sheldon. In for the contention. Big one-on-one -on -one here against Ryuga. We're gonna back up Gecko. Coming to help him out, and he swings over. Nice little teamwork there. Gecko's good for two, so that should solidify scrap time. North's gonna find another one, so full three down out of Scarlet Knights. I should be on the rotation for the rest of this. Ten seconds left, and you're actually going to lose out on ZB3, who was playing for the overextension through maps. The rest of the Scarlet Knights, they are surging on through Church. They're going to be trying to root out these players from the spawn, see if they can flip things out once more, but, I mean, root it in here. Panthers, they have a good hold on things. It's full four down again. It's five in a row from the Davenport Panthers to solidify early time to solidify that very early time and you know that Rutgers Esports are not exactly going to be right around the corner and when oh. they start coming around the corner North will be there to deal with them even swaps to the pistol whips Ryuga lean off the back side of those arches 
Now you flip your attention towards the other side of the map where Sheldon is piecing together three. Has number four in front of him, but Ryuga's gonna get the better of him just because of no regen came through. But even still, dealing with the numbers as soon as they try to work their way across the map, Hunter's Esports will finally get here for all of 15 seconds. And now if you are Davenport, you can chase out this kill inside of Wine. If you are Anthrax, would be a big one if they can find it. A won't be able to do it. Ooh. So now Hybrid will be able to maintain this position. Can they get the second? Oh, it's going to be North. Who again, is just pistol whipping everybody like it's their job. We Davenport Panthers with the close response here on three, setting up for a very big hill. Another solid rotation to Fountain Hill for Davenport. It was good last set. Good this set. Anthrax wins the fight on rooftops. No, he loses the fight on rooftops. It wasn't him. It's going to be Squatch Spawn for Rutgers. They're going to hit this right off the rip, but it looks like Davenport, they are well aware. You see, they pivot over the white arrow set up for the players to be tumbling on in. Ghost going to drop as well. And now, eyes going to be on Vines. Gecko, first one here. Spots him out. Good for one. That's about it. Trade still ringing through, but you got to think about that. You only have one solid hit. For Rutgers to take a shot at this Fountain Hill. ZB3 is going to be swinging around the corner. He's going to find North. Anybody here to shut this down? Sheldon looks like he doesn't want to give this up, but it looks like they got to give it up. You have to. I mean, you almost have to concede the rest of the time and try to set up for four, but when you go back to the first set of hard points, Rutgers Esports did a fantastic job. It's just breaking through the rotation around the five-second margin, and they might just be looking to do that again. Hybrid is over here, but North is just pistol whipping everybody. Like it's it. his job, I'm telling you. Can't let him do that. The rap pistol is great, but you just can't let him continuously do that. Davenport Panthers again. For the initial time, you have to break early if you are Rutgers because Davenport Panthers are already threatening to be over 200 early. 4v2, Ghost coming from up top. In comes EV3. North good for one. Gecko's still here to help out. Panthers looking to surge on in again, but it's Ghost on three in a row. Looking to stay alive. He doesn't spot himself. How does he slip out of that? How is he still alive? What's happening over here? Finally going to drop. Gecko's going to take him out and look at that. Panthers, they slip right back into church. Spawning up for Rutgers. It's going to be a split spawn, a pinch in to hit this, but Panthers, they are not letting them set up. They have conceded, or they have pushed past 200 points, and they're looking to put away this Tuscan. They can't win it here, but they can get close. Yeah, I, that leader's advantage is really starting to settle in here for Davenport Panthers. They got themselves a whole hard point lead walking away here for P4. You have to go if you are the Scarlet Knights. You have to set up inside of P5. You cannot allow Davenport Panthers to break inside. Looks like Gecko patiently waiting. Time to strike. Has a little bit of backup. Swings on in. Good for one. Teammate's going to be here. Anthrax finds a second. 2v2 on the inside. Stun's going to be out. And Sheldon still finds Ghost. ZB3 in the stairwell. Can you do anything? No, Gecko shuts him down 15 seconds. And Davenport's going to be seeing a map number five. They got to get into this soon because maps, it is going to be a tough one. Ryuga goes down to a team kill. North is still keeping a foot into this hill. 10 seconds remaining for the Panthers to put this one away. Kadej is going to be back in. North setting up for the crossfire with Anthrax. ZB3 trying to shut this one down. Set name from Sheldon. Can it find anything? It's not going to be him, but it's going to be Gecko looking to piece away these Panthers players. In for the pinch. Ryuga has to push this one out. It's three going down. Seven seconds proper. And a map five is going to be on the table. Make it three. Sheldon locking it down on the front line. Nobody can touch. We are headed to Tuscan Search and Destroy. We, we start framing it up like maybe you can bowl your way across Tuscan. Not as an individual, but the thing that the Panthers did so damn well is that they were doing it as a four-player squad. Everybody from top to bottom. Thrax, Gecko, North, Sheldon. They did an admirable job. It's just making sure that nobody was alone at any given time. They were double challenging, tri triple challenging everything around corners, making sure that their setups were absolutely sublime when they were getting themselves inside of Money Hills like two and three. You can even go back towards that first set of hills when they did end up getting inside of two. The way that they were set up, the same way that they were in the second set, players on the Godheady on the backside of the tank, North pistol whipping everybody again like it's their job. I don't know how he keeps getting away with these things. I think you have to be looking at this Davenport Panthers roster is not the same of what we saw even back then when they lost to Michigan Esports. They, this is this squad of Davenport Panthers playing some fine-tuned Call of Duty on a map like Tuscan Hardpoint where we said what it was. You have to be playing fundamentally strong. And they were able to do all of that. Everybody from Rutgers Esports was essentially a non-benefactor. Nobody went crazy positive. Nobody dropped even 3k damage. I mean, ZB3 got close. I mean... There's a couple things that are very, very true uh, at the end of the day. You know, the ZB3 three-pieces are always going to be there, but if the rest of the team won't be there to be able to clean things up, 
Davenport Panthers is going to absolutely run you over. Gecko, 36 and 19. 25 of those Elims not traded, by the way. Rex also dropping a 31 bomb, 23. This is what it was supposed to end up looking like, I'm sure, for the Panthers coming off that Bokosh hardpoint. They found all the eliminations in between, and they were able to put themselves in a position that completely gave themselves too big of a lead for the Scarlet Knights to bounce back from. I knew the Panthers, they're a strong team. They played they played together for a very long time, even pre-college, you know, pre-challengers. They have been working together to grow, and they don't always have time to practice, they say, but when they do, they make sure that it's good practice. And the adjustments, they're good enough to take a map five or take Rutgers to a map number five, which is going to be a hot one indeed. We're heading back to a search and destroy to close this one off. Number 20, Davenport Panthers, can they upset? The number 13 Scarlet Knights. We're gonna head to a break. We're gonna head to a break. And when we come back, that's gonna be what we're finding out. We'll see you in a bit. We are back with the Alpha Stream looking at Davenport Panthers trying to upset Rockers Scarlet Knights 2-2. Two two, heading into a Tuscan search and destroy map number five. And proper, this couldn't be any closer between the two. No, it absolutely couldn't be. I mean, look, we, we are absolutely going the distance. I said 2-3-5, maybe you steal a hard point. It wasn't 2 and 3. It was 2 steal a hard point, force out of map number 5. And now a real opportunity does present itself here for the Panthers out of Davenport University. Take a look at the best of 5 map set here. That Bokosh hard point, honestly, probably would have went in many people's eyes the Panthers' way. But a couple of crucial mistakes... It actually ended up being fundamentally exercised for the Scarlet Knights out of Rutgers University to be able to take that with just a few points to spare and about seven points on the game clock. The Kavutu control was not as competitive. There was a lot of egregious pushes that were coming through for Davenport University, but you take a look at that Berlin search and destroy, 6-4, and the Panthers were just catching the Scarlet Knights off guard on every single turn. If it comes down to them being the aggressor, for them to instigate these first bloods and to then be holding these angles to be able to continuously catch the Scarlet Knights off guard, that is where the majority of their rounds came from. I think that you're mostly going to be looking at the same thing to come through a Tuscan, specifically where a map where quick plants on A is everything. You very rare, rarely see teams push through into the B zone to be or in the B bomb site to be able to work that plant. That a lot of the pressure here on this map of Tuscan Search and Destroy is always coming through the middle of the map. That if Gecko, Sheldon, or Anthrax continually get away with highway robbery, this map could be very, very definitive for the Panthers to be able to take it. Hey, you talked about, you know, stark differences between Berlin and Tuscan and Search and Destroy factors. Well, I mean, there's comparisons to make as well as the post plant or the A setup. It's almost like the, the B side, you want that top broken stairwell or sit setup. Pardon me. But at the same time, you know, you make a very strong point. And it's one thing that you're going to be looking at if you're a Panthers fan to upset the Scarlet Knights is the SMG presence. I mean, Tuscan, it can be an SMG playground. It can be exactly what you need for an aggressive SMG player to just pop off. You just need one moment. And Anthrax, he very well could be that guy. Oh, totally. I mean, Thrax is, is that guy so far when it comes down to Search and Destroy. At least for me personally, I mean, you, you can make the argument for anybody on on Davenport to, to be able to, you know, almost fulfill the same role. But but it is being fulfilled by Anthrax currently on Davenport Panthers, and that is that instigator role, always trying to really force their hand as far as first blood is concerned. We'll have to see how it all plays out. That it looks like Thrax is going to be that island player over by the patio side first and foremost. Maybe a quick plant to ensue here for hybrid nades. Of course, being thrown up top defensively from Panthers. Won't dissuade Hybrid from planting this rocket A. Nobody has been allowed to slip the line for Panthers. It's going to be a good old-fashioned retake. You're going to have to go back to the checklist that we were talking about in control. One by one, step by step, to make sure that you can get this defuse. At the end of the day, a 4v4, 29 seconds. Hybrid finds the first Ryuga, a second. Now numbers heavily in the favor of Scarlet Knights. Last one alive, North tagged up to 16 as well. They know exactly where this player is. Not going to make it flawless, but definitely... To be around to, Star to the Scarlet Knights, nonetheless, is they're gonna put number one on the board. That would have got really, really scary for Yuga. Was not committed to watching the rooftop push through, but he talked about the post plant situation that can start to ensue when it comes down to that A bomb site. Quick plant, get a player off top fire, 
I need push coming through the middle of the map. But most importantly, if that fourth player isn't going to be all the way in the back dealing with a rooftop push on the back side of wine, then you're going to be putting yourself in a position to be able to deal with those players as soon as they come out from maps of which Ryuga was due, able to do in kind. Hyper doing the round. Going in towards an offense for Davenport Panthers. Three players strong over top of the ruins. And well, first blood actually comes through from Ghost. That's over inside of Zig. Or inside of Fire, excuse me. That's a big opening in the middle of the map. You haven't even got this bomb down. You look at, at already a flank gonna be thin, a pinch in fact. CB3 is gonna get caught by Thrax. You still gotta keep your eyes on this flank that's coming through. Out of the Panthers, Anthrax though, a second one. This time onto hybrid through the middle of the map, so number is gonna be in the hands of the Panthers. Down to two. Where's Scarlet Knights? Make it one left, and they know exactly where Ryuga is. He's gonna slip away into the back, but you see the Panthers, they know this. They're gonna be wrapping to B. Smart call. You got the numbers advantage. You go towards the bomb side. That's probably not going to be checked, but... Oh, Ryuka. Really good timing. Check the window. Just misses it slightly. His post plant set up immediately when that bomb was going down. You already cleared out marginally the backside of church. You have to watch your bomb planter exit. Sheldon with a heads up play. Looks top green and waits for Ryuga to come out. Thinking that they were going to get a free kill on a bomb planter to maybe give themselves a chance in that numbers advantage. So... One for one we go. Offense for offense. That honestly got really scary considering the fact that Davenport Panthers got blood early. They lost their player mid-map and Scarlet Knights had a certain opportunity to be able to put that in their favor. Round number three we go. Well, good statement of, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. They're able to battle back from nothing. Bomb goes down early. Nice nade. Hybrid. Drop low, but I right, for the count. Nobody able to follow up with that. Nice shots at a ghost. Tags up Sheldon down low. Cleans up north up top. But Anthrax will place nade to keep us even in threes. Through the middle of the map, there's going to be a big one on one. Anthrax finds it. Trade at a Ryuga. Still even. 25 seconds left. Looking to make a move is Panthers for this defuse. But keep your eyes on player number two, Ryuga. He's already wrapped all the way top church. He's going to be in a perfect position to defend this bomb. One player's left is Gecko with 13 seconds. There's just no time to do this proper. And jumping out, you're looking for kills, but with no time to make it happen, it's going to be a second round of Rutgers. It's an impressive last kill, but you said it best, my friend. Just no time. You need to take seven and a half seconds to defuse that sucker. You need maybe about 12 to be able to find that one kill, but if it was only one, maybe you get out scot three. Maybe about like 15, 20 seconds, unless they're lined up. It takes too much time to be able to clear all of these nooks and crannies here that we have here on Tuscan Top Church. Side of you, Top Monument. I could sit here for hours and just give you map call outs, truly. But I think Rutgers Esports able to initially recognize that if they're not going to get denied that quick plant, they can get themselves in a post plant very, very quickly as well. Another offense for the Panthers is actually going to be sunned up. That's great information. And Ghost collects on the north again. Time inside of Zig. Anthrax. Finds one, Ryuga, with rebuttal. Keeping numbers in Scarlet Knight's favor. In the same position that we saw in the second round, Panthers, they're going to have to fight back from a player disadvantage. And with that kill onto ZB3, it evens this up. And in fact, actually opens up an opportunity for the Panthers to rotate around. So you can see that Scarlet Knights, they're recognizing that. And they're not just going to be kind of focusing on the middle of the map. They have to keep aware that there is a potential to rotate to B. They are guessing right. Ryuga's going to sit patiently in the middle of the map. If you're not caught, Gecko's going to find you. Ryuga goes down. 1v2. Bomb's going down. That's a great check coming out from Gecko. In the immediate corner. And well, the second he slides out, I almost thought he was going to have the snapper on towards the bomb site itself. That would have been impressive to say the least. Would have given themselves a good old scholar's try to try to close out this round. But uh, Sheldon, one of the best head glitches that we have in Search and Destroy, being the bomb site itself, able to play to a fine T. They're getting able to get themselves that numbers advantage is massive within its own self for these offensive rounds. It, it's really just been the tail of the tape for both of our two teams. And this is again, coming off of Rutgers initially defensively finding that first blood over by fire over inside a zig, but the trades that come through for the Panthers offensively has been too much to bear for Rutgers to try to win out the defensive round ghosts. Sieging through this window did see North cross, but is waiting for all these nades to cross. Somebody has to peek eventually, I guess. Eventually, he spots out two in the middle. Let's go ahead for Ryuga to drop into well. No Anthrax in the back as well. Hybrid's going to clean him up. Down to two. Panther's going to have to answer back some way. North is going to find one, but losing out on Sheldon is not going to be the case 
to pull yourself back into the round. A very strong offense out of Scarlet Knights is going to push them into the lead 3-2 to two with a quick plant and a near flawless skill set. And that's just nerdy. I mean, obviously a lot of time has been uh, passed since our bread and butter strategies of just running at each other here in the CCL, specifically on Tuscan Search. Start recognizing a lot of these little hidey holes through the broken windows up on top fire, and you're going to be able to find yourself a nice little timing. That information comes through. Ryuga gets activated to be able to cut through the middle of the map. Got ourselves. Defense, or a defensive side again for Rutgers Esports. Let's find this first blood again. Yeah, they sure oh, do. Man. But it's about maintaining the numbers advantage defensively for the Scarlet Knights. That's for their biggest downfall. And it's the difference because just opening up that window allows Ghost to know that somebody's there. It's something that Ghost didn't have to worry about with that nerdy spot that we saw. So... Again, Panthers at a disadvantage. It seems like this has been the case. I'll throw Tuscan Search and Destroy. Back to Church. Weird timing. Hybrid's going to find a second and get traded out. Oh, Gecko gives him way. He's not going to find the kill. In fact, it's going to be the call for you. Going to come out to help. Now, Sheldon, 1v4, makes it a 1v3. Bomb in hands. 42 seconds to make this one happen. But 1v4s, they are hard. Especially when you have an auto in hand and throwing shoulders. Ryuga spots him out. You can see all these arrows. On the Scarlet Knights, they are just trapping Sheldon in the spot, not giving him a chance to find a kill. Yeah, no, there's nowhere to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, there, there's been a lot of good free cams tonight by Ryan, but, like, that's that just really takes Tier the one. game. It's just like, you got, you got nowhere to go, and he's just like, yeah, I, I agree proper. I ain't got nowhere to go, but the one place I'm going to go is <laughs> into the fire and the flames to the next round. We will carry on. Finally, a defensive round comes through. Buckers again, thanks to Ghost, is able to get that first blood again. They found that first blood in top fire two times over, one inside of the Zig. They were able to maintain that life lead. Now we're going to have a little bit of an audible play coming through. Three for one. DB3 with a heads up play throws their Wait, utility out. They're going to find themselves over by the B zone, but I'm going to check the corner. Gecko is so patient. He sees one go back church. Do not shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Oh, don't shoot. He does find one. That's big within his own self, so the rotation should be coming through, but the bomb could be planted still. Oh, that could have been so much more, but yeah, at least finds one. Bombs could be wrapping back to the A site. Anthrax is in a position to spoil the fun, but he's going to get off this bomb site. It rains the bomb charge, turns around, spots Ghost. It only goes down. 3v2. Anthrax and North, and they keep Rutgers away from match point. They're going fast. Bomb goes down. Finds Ghost. ZB3 not able to find the trade. Has to tip on out with 43 HP. Here comes Hybrid around the backside. Anthrax is going to find ZB3. 1v1. Oh, he ups the bomb. There's no way he sticks this. No, he ops off. Nate's going to be out. Anthrax around the outside. Gets the better timing. And Panthers, they put up three. That was such a big brain. Cam bait. They're coming there at the end. You in the death cam probably ended up seeing teammates screaming like, he's on the bomb, he's on the bomb. He's just hopping it. The nade gets cooked. It does have a really good bounce over towards where the bomb was planted, but I mean, Thrax has been in this position through a multitude of Call of Duties through a many different years. I can only assure you that, that little bit of a bait, bait that does end up coming through, they were able to then resurface themselves on the other side of you, have themselves a little bit of a friendly head glitch to play off of, and able to walk away with three in that round. So keep themselves alive, not allowing the Scarlet Knights to get inside Ooh. of that fifth and final round. That was... That was cute. Three round or three rounds in the back pocket for them for Panthers. They would benefit from this offensive round to be able to ride any momentum that they have off of that previous. Oh, another Ghost. first blood. It just feels like the Panthers are always fighting with a player disadvantage proper and I want to make this happen. It just doesn't seem like they're really gonna spot to spoil Sheldon. 2v4. Bombs down. ZB3 finds Gecko and 1v4. This time Anthrax. Can you make it happen on four in a row? Would be something different. Finds a second. Ooh, sliding on in. ZB3, and it's not going to happen this time. Anthrax, it looked good, but Ryuga hopped the defuse. ZB3 was there for the help, and Rutgers, they are going to find match point. I was so worried. I mean, everybody was just starting to run at it. Anthrax just solo dolo, and they honestly almost put themselves in a position to allow Thrax to be able to find isolated engagements continuously. But even more so than that, just... I got to talk about it. I feel like, I feel like Ghost, what, like six, maybe five at minimum of their kills at seven and five have been first bloods. 
from those top positions, top fire and top church. That is so massive. The Ruckers here on Tuscan Search and Destroy. And now a little bit of an island play going to be coming through. This is a round one strategy that we actually saw from the Scarlet Knights. Quick plan here at A. Going to be leaving Ryuga over towards map to be able to watch any players exit. But as Hybrid tries to leave the bomb plant, it goes towards the middle of the map. And now Davenport got a numbers advantage. This bold play from Hybrid. Anthrax checking ZB3 up mid, but it's going to be Sheldon to find the kill. Ghost last alive in a 1v3, looking to take this player off the defuse. Flies on in. Finds north, but he can't get on out, so Sheldon's going to deliver four rounds for the Panthers. They stay alive in Tuscan, and one step closer to a round 11. I mean, proper, every single map has been neck and neck from the teams, and I didn't expect Panthers to go down without a fight. Yeah, it was just an egregious push through off the, off the bomb being planted, right? I mean, typically when you are that bomb planter, you try to put yourself in a position, maybe get inside bottom church, get yourself inside yourself under nest where you do see that a bomb very, very well, but it, there was no immediate help, no immediate trade that could possibly have come through. The middle of the map was just being looked at and frankly was being secured by Davenport. We just were kind of gifted those two kills, so... Now an opportunity. They need to secure this offensive round if they want to maintain their livelihood here in this search and destroy. Trying to spray through the wall again. North stays alive to fight the good fight. The map control for Rikers. Nice nade from Anthrax. ZB3's got to go big for this flank. Well, so everything's going to be all or nothing. And there he is. He's going to find North. 3v3. Here comes the retake. 28 seconds to make it happen. Rockers, can they put this away in 10? Or are we headed to around 11? All the way through the back. Sheldon's going to spot him, but nice shots out of ZB3. 2v2. Time is draining. Anthrax going to win the fight through the middle of the map. ZB3 now less alive in a 1v2. And we are going the distance. Map 5. Round 11. We get it all. Oh, man. Oh, man. Some board are coming alive when it's absolutely necessary for them to do so. When two rounds on the bounce are able to put themselves in a position to force out a round 11. This is all off of, again, just denying Ghost that first blood. It was actually Thrax that had cooked up a nade to a nice medium rare temperature and just placed it right in the lap of Ghost Top Church. I mean, they are always in that top position. Those early numbers advantages have been beneficial to say the least for Rutgers. Let's see if they find it again. Be another island play that is coming through. Birch Presence is a bountiful coming through for Rutgers University. They're actually giving up a lot of space here, Colin. Just basically playing with their food oh, no. this way. Maybe off a of ZB3 for the flank, but they get called out. 4v3. Ryuga. Middle of map. Stops the defuse. Goes to second. Suddenly the script is a little bit flipped. Numbers to the Scarlet Knights. Panthers again fighting from the deficit, but they've been here all game long. They know how to fight this fight proper. I'm looking at the flank from Scarlet Knights this time. Will the Panthers read that? Well, Sheldon's picking it up. He's totally aware of this. That might be a possibility. Gonna fade out the play. Sheldon even had his gunny up. Ryuga's gonna get the better of him. Now it's Gecko. Left in a 1v3. Good luck, Alpon. Oh, Ryuga in the back. They know where he is. And here comes the cleanup crew from Scarlet Knights. All three players on the hunt. Gecko's there gonna get caught goes. from behind. And the Scarlet Knights, there's no upset today. The number 13 Rutgers Esports, they're walking away with the round 11. They're walking away with game five. And they're walking away with the series. Woo, man, I'm sure that got really close to what Rutgers wanted. But I'm sure that it opened up a, a lot of eyes, uh, especially. And I feel like I'm always saying this when it comes down to our uh, top 20 games uh, specifically. Remember, uh, the Panthers are uh, ranked number 20 this week. And Rutgers Esports are, of course, ranked number 13. It does really say a lot for at least some teams within top 20 about how competitive they truly are. And it always ends up coming down to what they can bring to the table, where uh, obviously for the Scarlet Knights are, are very fundamentally strong as a team. The Davenport Panthers are slowly becoming more and more fundamentally sound. It, it just comes down to a lot of these decision makings and a lot of these uh, very tight knit affairs in around 11. I mean, that was a strategy right there that it almost felt like the Scarlet Knights were really waiting until that final moment, weren't they, Colin, where they just give up all the space. They were. Ghost finally gets blooded first, trying to find that first blood top charge. They get hit with a nade, and into a round 11, they completely concede all of the space, force Davenport to try to make the move. They guess wrong, and although ZB3 did get called out on the flank, the one thing still remains is that middle of the map was opened up 
like a can of tuna and all of Rutgers University, two of them at the very least, pushed through the flank. And although it got read by Sheldon, got completely bamboozled because of it. Ghost had a fantastic game, and that is not true. I don't know if it's six total first bloods. I can't trust that side of the screen. But a good chunk of those nine kills were first bloods. Ryuko, oh, yeah. of course, was that island player down over by P5 continuously for offense, always keeping Davenport Panthers honest. They were trying to find themselves those advantages on the flank. They win today, but I'm sure that the Rutgers University camp are not going to be too satisfied with how this uh, turned around for themselves. So they want to be considered to be a top three team coming out of stage two here. The top cut, if you will. You have Bay State, Northwood still in the distance for themselves. Want to solidify themselves as one of the stronger teams going in towards playoffs. It's heartbreaking for Davenport in this matchup. You would have loved to walk away with the series. Would have been good for your stocks, especially in a spicy stage two. But you just don't get it. You miss the mark. A big round 11 win at a Rutgers Scarlet Knights. What a banger match for us to get today proper. I, I mean, I was expecting it out of these two. I mean, similar in score lines. You know, stage two it has really been a, a tale on exploiting a lot of weaknesses for squads who look great in stage one, but going into stage two where you're kind of stepping toe to toe with similar opponents. I mean, you're learning a lot about our top 25 teams in CCL. And this is one to really kind of keep your eyes out for. I mean, seven ranks difference between both of these teams and a game five round 11. That says a lot about how spicy stage two is. Yeah, it really does. And this, this is exactly why everything was framed up the way that it has been. You know, we have a lot of colleges that were obviously close. We had some damn near 300 teams to start off this uh, 2022 season. Everything was regionalized. Everything was put into divisions. But then you ended up being top three from those plotted divisions. Now you have the best competition that the region has to offer. And say what you will about the Northeast, that it is relatively softer comparatively to some of the other ones. But Bay State and Northwood are absolutely in here. And those are two out of the three top three teams, obviously. Still yet to be decided who is two, who is three, I'm sure. But even so, it doesn't mean that they could get out scot-free, that there are still teams that are progressively getting better as far as CCL is concerned. And who's to say that Rutgers, as, as they progress further down the, the line, leading into playoffs, I'm sure there'll be a top 18 coming out of this uh, this elite uh, Northeast division, Colin. But even more so than that, they are still showing why they have always been talked about in the CCL. I'm excited when we finally get that one versus two matchup inside of the Northeast tier one. But for right now, we get to see the number three versus number four coming up next on stream. We're going to have the Ottawa Braves versus Grand Canyon University. You don't want to miss it. A quick break. The Alpha Stream will be right back.